That is a 24 inch wheel on a standard factory production car. And the thing is, if the wheel is that big and the tire is that big, how big's the car on top? What we have here is the first all electric Cadillac Escalade and everything about it is obscenely massive. The mirrors, the wheels, the doors, the legroom, the battery, the weight, if anything can make next year's all electric Range Rover look like a puny pipsqueak, it's this. So what is an Escalade for those of you not of a North American persuasion? Glad you asked. This is an Escalade, basically a massive luxury SUV and the top of the range Cadillac. First came along one of these in 1998, 99, and the timing could not have been better because it was right at the start of what grew into the massive luxury SUV boom. Over a million have been sold so far and even today, one third of all luxury SUVs sold in the US is an Escalade. The other thing that did the Escalade no harm whatsoever was for it to accidentally become the official hip hop company car. So many rappers have owned these things since the late 90s and have actually referenced them in their tracks that Cadillac named its first electric SUV, the Lyric, to kind of pay tribute to this car's legacy. Now this is the current fifth gen Escalade, but the recipe is pretty familiar. It has a GM ladder frame chassis that goes under all sorts of other SUVs and trucks. It's got lots of screens, lots of buttons actually, uh, lots of leather, lots of seats, and I was expecting lots of cylinders. You see, most Escalades are sold with a 6.2 litre V8 under the bonnet, which means you're not driving past too many of those. But the one that they've decided to lend me is the sensible 3 litre straight six turbo diesel Escalade, which sounds like one of those massive freight trains that they have over here. Ready? <laughs> oh dear. And if you take the long walk down to the boot while the engine is running, it's worse for you than chain smoking. But honestly, the fumes, the muck that's coming out the back of it makes me go lightheaded. But that, the lack of refinement, it's a small price to pay when you look down at your trip meter here and you realize that you are doing 22 miles per US gallon. The ride's a bit less choppy than the old Escalade because they've now hit on the idea of fully independent suspension and the interior is genuinely pretty nice, but it's not what you'd call agile. So in that case, you might well think, well, about time, there was an electric Escalade. Need one of these things to have some eco credentials. But I don't know, the idea of one of these that's considerably bigger that's massively heavier and has 750 brake horsepower, well, I find that quite alarming. But here it is anyway, going on sale later in 2024 for about $130,000. It's based on the same GM platform as the Hummer EV, which means it'll have a double-decker 212 kilowatt hour battery that on its own weighs over 1300 kilograms. Yep, 1.3 tons just for the battery. And the whole car is very much on the wrong side of four tons. That monstrous battery should take the claimed range up to around 450 miles, while 750 brake horsepower of dual motors and the usual instant torque delivery you get from an electric car will heave the IQ from zero to 60 in four point something seconds. That's some pretty heavy juicy engineering. So let's speak to one of the people that's dreamt it up. 
Right, so I've brought another human being in for some scale. This is Al Oppenheiser. Al, thank you very much. Oh, pleasure to meet you. To come in to meet us, the chief engineer of Escalade IQ. So this is the man for our technical questions. First off, simple one, how long has this project been in the offing in the background? How long have you been working on it? Well, this project started as the Ultium platform for all the electric trucks that we have at GM. That was April of 2019. Uh, hmm. The Escalade took a path on its own to make sure we captured everything that would make a large uh, SUV, luxury SUV, a Cadillac. So I'd say probably late 2019, we started working on it. So is this just a Hummer EV with a Cadillac badge? It's worth explaining. So the Ultium platform basically is, uh, if you think of a sandwich type design. So we went into the um, advanced studio, advanced engineering group at General Motors, and we had this uh, concept where you have a rectangular structural plate above and below the battery or the res, hmm. we call them. Um, it would become the structural component of the architecture that was integrated with the front and rear independent suspension, which is also unique for a full-size SUV. Hmm. Um, the beauty is the, the structure itself, it, it um, acts as a structural component of the architecture. Um, again, it allows us to get a, you know, the mass down low where you want it, centered in the vehicle, low CG height. Um, this allows us also to, um, being unique for this architecture, it allows us to expand um, the amount of battery modules we can put in for range, hmm. um, as opposed to trying to stuff batteries in between an existing uh, body on frame pickup truck. Yeah. So you've got effectively the same double decker 212 kilowatt hour battery. Yes. But then you put Escalade only suspension on it and an Escalade only wheelbase, is that right? That's correct. So the wheelbase of the uh, Escalade IQ uh, is stretched from the other usages of the Ultium platform on the truck architecture. Uh, essentially, for reference, it's about um, two inches longer than the existing uh, Escalade long wheelbase. Um, but the fact that we've got rear steer, which we'll talk about, I'm sure. Mm. Um, allows a shorter turning circle than the current Escalade short wheelbase. I don't know about you, but for me, the literal elephant in the room is the Escalade's size, girth, and the idea of selling a four-ton family car to the general public. Now, current Escalade, I've been driving one recently, that to me as a European, as a Brit, is a huge car, it's a very heavy car, but then it's kind of dwarfed by this. This is... I think if it's anything like the Hummer, it's going to be over four tons on the road. Do you have any sort of safety anxiety around it, around getting something like that stopped, around it being around other cars on the road that are a half of the weight? What's your None whatsoever. Any, any vehicle, whether it's a, a small, uh, lightweight vehicle or a vehicle the size of the Escalade IQ, have to meet all the same safety requirements. So our stopping distance, our acceleration, our crash requirements are all the same as any vehicle sold in the United States or globally for that matter. Mm. So I know there is this perception that it's, um, it's too big. And um, you know, we put all the safety measures in. We have, we have a, a very long list of safety features that protect not only the, the occupants, but the pedestrians and other, other, um, other vehicles as well. Mm. With the pedestrian thing's interesting because you know, speaking to one of your colleagues just now, he was saying about, his 14 year old daughter standing near this and she almost like couldn't see over the bonnet again like if this this is going to be a mess if it comes near a human being is there a when you're designing it is it purely about the look or does what what about this is also considering pedestrians well we actually take the design and the uh, engineering requirements all into account together we work collaboratively as a team with our design partners mm. uh, for instance this um, front e-trunk as we call it uh, it does have a very low lift over height and when we were doing the uh, architecture of all of our dimensional characteristics we would bring some of the smaller uh, team members in with their bags of groceries and their backpacks and have a low lift over height. So yes the vehicle is tall but we'll open the, the, the hood for you here shortly and you can see it's got a low lift over height so yeah. those that are intimidated by these massive 24 inch wheels can see that does it really matter if you're able to load your groceries and load your, your two sets of golf clubs and whatever you can get in this 12.2 cubic foot massive storage yeah, I space? I get that from a practicality point of view. I just mean more of like a, as a safety concern. It, to me, as someone who doesn't grow up around cars this size, it feels like these cannot get any bigger. I was so aghast, so 
unprepared for the size and mass of the Escalade IQ, it took me a little while to get my head around it. The issue with a car like this is that it's like having nuclear weapons. Once one guy has them and promises to only ever use it responsibly, then everyone else wants them too, just to feel safe. Ugh, I don't know, what do you think? While I have a bit more of a chat with Al, vent your feelings in the comments. I imagine the tyres are bespoke for this car because of the weight, the size, the yeah. general application. Yep. Um, are the brakes, again, you know, we were talking about the weight just now. Do you, is this a bespoke, super powerful brake package because, again, of... It's bespoke for car. this type of vehicle. Um, basically, you've, you've taken existing systems and technologies we use in other GM vehicles and, and, and grown it to the size of the vehicle to be able to give you the stopping distance and so mm. on that we need. Um, we do have the uh, brake drying features. We do have uh, you know, unique features that go with our braking systems that allow them to you know, safely operate at temperature, stop when you need it. Um, mm. We do have the interactive uh, one pedal drive, region on demand, variable sure. region on demand. So a very interactive system with, with our technology. And does any Escalade customer have any need or requirement to want to go off road? Is there any design time uh, given over to that? I'm sure, I'm sure somebody has whether they wanted to or not, but we do have um, a, 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 a air suspension. Um, so we do have different settings for the vehicle. Um, we don't have an off-road mode and because we think most of our Escalade IQ customers don't intentionally want to go off-road, but <laughs> I like the intentionally. <laughs> intentionally, but we do have uh, 8,000 pound trailering capability because um, we do know that these are used for light watercraft, um, snowmobiles, light trailers and so on. And, and you need to be able to back those into the lake. Um, and, and also there's some two track uh, overlanding type adventures that you could use these for very, very easily. Yeah, it's one heck of a lifestyle uh, vehicle, isn't it, Al? It is. Lovely to meet you. Thank you very Pleasure much. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. <sighs> Sorry, I've just been for a walk around this thing. It takes quite a while. Right, here are some things that I've noticed. As usual on a Cadillac, you get a big vertical light. It does lots of fun animations. But the useful one is you see these big LEDs here. The more of those that are lit up when it's charging, the more charge you've got. That is basically the world's biggest battery indicator. Doesn't need a grill because it's electric, but you get a sort of illuminated nose. Instead, I'm more interested in what's underneath it. Under there is what they call the E-trunk. Obviously, if it was coming to the UK, it would be the E-boot. And you get 12 cubic feet of very secure storage, which is a good idea. Come with me down here. If you don't like the sort of dark chrome finish on the wheels, on the trim here. If you're not a fan, don't worry, don't have the sport model, have the Lux model, and that's a shinier silver finish. If you don't like parking, and um, yeah, you might not, uh, they're gonna crib a trick off the Hummer EV. Remember the um, crab walk mode? You've seen Jack doing that in his film. Well, Cadillac are going to have Cadillac arrival mode, and that will help you in and out of your parking spaces. So there is a feature that makes the car more practical. From where you're looking at it, just there, do you think there's a lot of Range Rover in it? I know that Escalades always have a, a nice big vertical light, but something about the way this tapers and this roof spoiler, the angle of this rear window, I'm seeing a lot of the current Rangey in there. And, um, oh yeah, the badge, 1000. It's only got 750 horsepower, only. So what could this be? Well, it's because it's got a thousand newton meters of torque. I didn't know America did metric units. Whatever units you're measuring in, a car that's this gargantuan should be pretty spacious and feature packed inside. Shall we have a look? Right, the interior. Only joking, um, but I am not allowed to sit inside. It's not that I am too short to clamber up inside, it's that this IQ is a very early hand-built model and it's really delicate, so I'm not allowed to park my bum here. So I've got to describe the interior from outside. Bear with me. Um, the main focal point is obviously this enormous 55-inch wall-to-wall display at the front and it is curved across the dashboard, which is a lovely effect, but it obviously means that what's on the passenger's screen 
is really visible to the driver here, but apparently they have thought of this and that will be polarized on the production car. So if you're sat here, you won't be distracted by what the passenger is streaming over there. Be interesting to see if that works, doesn't it? Speaking of screens, all of your main controls, because obviously there are very few buttons, uh, they're in here in what they call the command center. You get a second one of those in the back and that's on top of this nice floating center console. Now I do have a point to make in favor of this car. It's about time the Americans stopped taking loads of flack for having rubbish car interiors. They did for a very long time and it was justified because they were all made out of wheelie bins and old burger packets, but this is definitely up there with Europeans. This leather feels very supple and waxy. The treatment of the wood, the real metal, just the click of the switch gear, it's really nicely done. It's definitely, definitely up there with a BMW iX or a Mercedes GLS. It feels tasteful, it feels modern, it even smells nice. Just imagine how good it'd be if I could sit in there. Actually, scratch that. You want to be back here in an Escalade IQ in the executive seating package, no less, which costs seven and a half thousand dollars. And I think a fair few people will be ticking that box because just look what you get. Multi-way reclining adjustable seats with speakers in the headrest. There's up to 40 speakers in this car if you go for the top of the range version. Loads of legroom, loads more screen, loads of light coming in through your panoramic glass roof. And of course you have your command center here and you can swipe around on there and close the doors electronically. You've got cup holders, you've got wireless charging for both passengers. You've got an armrest, which could be made from Louis Vuitton leather. It's all been very nicely done. Makes you wonder really, would you rather get your electric chauffeuring done from the back of a Mercedes EQS, which is rather cramped, from the back of a BMW i7, which has that very cool theater screen hanging down from the roof and skewering the driver's view, or in here. Because for one thing, if you're sat here, you don't have to worry about parking this. And if you were worried that having the rear row of seats up would destroy all the boot space, don't worry, because there's still enough room here for the small bicycle that you'll need to ride back all the way to the driver's seat. I won't stay in a job very long if I end up speechless, but I'm genuinely struggling to sum this car up, you know? I don't think the European mind can comprehend something this big and this heavy. And yet, is this not the embodiment of the American dream on 24 inch rims? It has all of the range, the technology, the space and the luxury anyone could ever want. But I just can't help thinking it's also more than anyone could ever need.